Hello and welcome to the Dialogue Project podcast. My name is Carl and it's very nice to have you listening. So thank you. I'm delighted to have the opportunity to share with you a man who definitely fulfills the criteria that I use when I'm thinking about who to record conversations with uh, and edit and share with you. And this man is called Jean-Francois Clairvoix and he has a beautiful name. But that's not why I want to share the conversation, and neither is it because he's an astronaut. Although he is an astronaut, what a wonderful thing that must be. The reason I'm sharing this conversation is because Jean-Francois gave me a lesson in describing things beautifully and eloquently. Not just skillfully, but with passion and with energy and with commitment so I just want you to enjoy enjoy the conversation mostly just because he's a wonderful guy and uh, enjoy his French accent. But more particularly, I would invite you to enjoy the way that he describes from his unique perspective our planet. So thank you, Jean-Francois, and thank you for listening. What you're about to listen to is an edit created by The Dialogue Project, with the full permission of everyone involved in the conversation. If you can hear my voice clearly, the volume will be about right for you. Thank you for listening. First... Human people are living bodies, they look for food, something to drink and to eat, like animals. But once we have this, uh, why aren't we satisfied with just food and and, uh, water? uh, Mm. I think that's because we want to learn and because we want pleasure. Mm. You know, the the only way we interact with our environment are our senses. Mm. We have eyes, we like to see beautiful things, we don't like to see ugly things. Mm. We like to hear nice music, we don't like to hear horrible sound. (laughs) We like to eat something good, we don't like to eat something not good. And uh, And our smell and... uh... And I think you go to space, you look at the Earth and you cry, because it's beautiful. The Earth is a beautiful planet. When you look from a distance typical uh, typical of... uh, orbital uh, flights between 400 and 600 kilometers away, not far away, just a few hundred it's kilometers far, away. The horizon is about uh, 2,500 kilometers away. And since we fly 16 times per day around the Earth, <laughs> uh, so a typical 10 days flight, you have flown... Uh, 100, one, 160 times around the planet. Around the planet. So you fly at eight kilometers per second, 28,000 kilometers per hour, or 17,000 miles per hour for people who like miles. <laughs> but, 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 but effortlessly, almost. It, it's... Yes, no effort at all. Yeah. After eight and a half minutes, you cut the engines, you are in orbit forever, with nothing running, no engines running. There is nothing to stop you. You take a, a baby mm. who just starts crawling, you know, starts moving by itself. You, you put the baby in the corner of your living room. Mm-hmm. Will he stay there? <laughs> he or she? Of course not. No, why? Why? He wants to explore. Yeah. He wants to know what is there, what is behind the armchair, what is behind the table. If the door is open, maybe a few percent will be afraid and yeah. will wait for others to go. Yeah. But most will go through the door and explore the corridor behind. Why? They want to know what's behind the wall. So it's a human instinct. A Some people instinct. tell me that's because they are looking for their mother or they, or it's a religious thing. No, I just think it's natural for a for, uh, human being, as soon as they can go a certain distance, yeah. they do it because they want to know what's there. You mm. know, when we invented the bicycle, we went uh, 100 kilometers further than when we were just... Uh, just walking, uh, walking uh, every day. And then uh, cars took us 1,000 kilometers away and airplanes 10,000 kilometers uh, further. It's a destiny of humankind to explore 
just to know where we are coming from, where we are, uh, where are we going, what's out there. Can you recall the very first time you saw the Earth from space? Can you remember what it was like? Oh yes, I was in the mid-deck for my first flight, so no window and some work to do for 15 minutes. Right. We took off around noon uh, from uh, Florida and about 20 minutes after liftoff, we were uh, starting flying over Europe and it was uh, dawn, it was uh, sunset mm. uh, over uh, Germany, not yet for France. So I saw Spain, I recognized the west coast of France, mm. uh, not very bright, but still illuminated by the shallow sun. Mm. But Germany was already in darkness and there were storms, oh, thunderstorms over goodness, Germany, and the whole Germany at night. I could see masses of clouds illuminated by lightnings from the inside and propagating this light energy from a mass of cloud to the next mass of cloud. And I thought the earth is alive. I mean, and, you know, it's very impressive. You realize that we are nothing. I mean, <laughs> earth is a living planet mm. by itself as a geological object. Mm. It has its own life, plate tectonics, mm. the oceans, the winds, the, the lightnings. These are not human made. These no, are no. natural things. No. So I realized that earth is a real, real powerful living body mm. and we are nothing compared. Mm. The only thing we can do is try our best to make our species live as long as we can, but the Earth will definitely survive humankind. Has that distance, the physical distance, created another kind of distance for you? And has it changed your relationship with this planet that we're on? Do you think about it like that? Definitely, yes. Uh, my, my space flights have changed from the very first minute I watched the Earth have me... Uh, I mean, it, it had me change my, my vision of, of us, humankind. I realized we are nothing. We are peanuts. I mean, we are, we are ridiculous compared to this huge living geological body that is the planet Earth. Yeah. Uh, I had some tears, you know, I wet my eyes and uh, I was told before by some colleagues, you know, if you let yourself be sensitive to what you see from space, you may, you may be so moved that you may cry. And uh, we were six crew members, three flying for the first time. Mm. And the three of us, one was already on the flight deck. And when uh, we rejoined that colleague with another one, together we watched at the earth and it was like, wow. And we pinch each other. Oh. Can you imagine? We are there watching this <laughs> spectacular view. We are, we are lucky. We are privileged. Mm. And then, oh, like baby, like kids, <laughs> look there. And then another one, yes. And and look there, the, the the desert. And then, oh, look at the clouds, the shape they have there. And and for for a few minutes, you know, we were like, like just children. like kids, just like children, yeah. discovering something new, magnificent, spectacular, impressive. And, uh, and uh, do you lose that? I mean, because you've been in space three oh, no, times. I remember. I remember every day. Every day I look at the sky, I think, whether it's a few minutes, few hours, or just a few seconds, but there is no one day without thinking that I was lucky to be high above the atmosphere and have the privilege to watch the Earth magnificent, mm. mostly blue, mm. but when we look at details, you know, we see a lot of different mm. colors. And uh, I wish everybody would have a chance to see that one day in their life because it would change the view people have of our condition on Earth. I, I do believe that, really. You think it would give people the humility that you've talked about? Yes, we would, it definitely make you feel that you are a passenger on a spaceship that is the Earth mm -hmm. and we are all in the same bath. We are all together. Mm -hmm. uh, we may not speak the same language. We may not, not have all the same skin color. Uh, but relative to the Earth, we are just the same. We are humankind. We are one crew of uh, six billion people. And uh, we have to respect Earth because it is so powerful that uh, we cannot pretend we will master what is the destiny of Earth as a living mm. planet. 
it is beautiful so it inspires uh, some thoughts about uh, you know the the chance we have to be on this wonderful planet when you think venus is 400 degrees yeah. mars is very cold uh, and desertic all around uh, when i came back from my first mission yeah. i was very uh, frustrated to see people throwing you know papers on the street yeah, letter, it is not pollution you know it is not mm. going to to uh, poison no somebody planet, no. but it is such so beautiful if everybody was just thinking it doesn't require any effort mm. to be clean but if everybody would think to respect the view to respect the sight to respect the landscape and mm. uh, what we see with our own eyes whether it's man-made or not we would live constantly in a beautiful environment. When you look at wars and when you look at conflict and when you look at man's inhumanity to man, how is that different when you've been away? In fact, you are told before that from space you don't see borders. And that's not true, actually. Oh, interesting. For example, the border between South Israel and uh, Northeast uh, Egypt, yeah. you can see from 2,000 kilometers away. You see a straight line that's uh, 200 kilometers long. Or, mm. I mean, you see a straight line that separates a piece of land, land where people do nothing, mm -hmm. in Egypt, because they all live on the Nile, yeah. and that's, that's fine. And on the Israel side, it's a small country, they exploit all land surface. Even yeah. when it is dry, they put uh, artificial irrigation and they, they produce, uh, you know, vegetables, mm. uh, they, they rice, corn, uh, wheat. Uh, and you can see that division. And that clear. division you can see from. And there are three or four places on Earth where you, you can see physically man-made borders. Mm, mm, mm. And you realize that they are on Earth different kind of uh, humankind uh, groups mm. who are who don't have the same uh, priorities not the same uh, objectives not the same way of living mm. so you realize we are not all the same but we are on the same planet and uh, if you take uh, an Egyptian and an uh, Israeli in space mm. together mm -hmm. and they watch it will make them it will make them think differently and eventually work together better you know <laughs> when you look at the earth from space something that struck me from the very first view on the horizon i expected to see a kind of blurry limit of the planet yeah. because of the uh, the, the thickness of, of the, the atmosphere. atmosphere but in fact on the horizon you almost see a very neat limit of the earth because the atmosphere is so thin <laughs> relative to the size of the earth oh it's like a cigarette paper as i oh, say I see. so you barely see it you realize how fragile is our life on the surface mm. it's not the fragility of earth it's the fragility of living bodies living animals vegetables humans yeah. on the surface because we all depend on the on this lay, thin layer of oxygen but relative to the size of the earth it's very very thin and you realize that our life uh, leans on a very fragile, thin, thin, thin layer of gas. On a cigarette paper. Yeah, and yeah. we better protect that, yeah. yeah.